Hey folks. Brandon, who's been pretty active, I'm trying to keep up with you, dude. Didn't mean to mess up your nice long weekend there. Oh, no, well, no you didn't. I ignored it for the weekend, to be fair. <laughs> I, I opened it, I looked long enough to make sure that I was being responsive for the things for this morning. But I did have an early morning, so I was trying to catch up. Yeah, I think most of all that came out of me just looking at a lot of the stuff, thinking back to the Notary V1 and Tough. And I've had a client that's been doing Notary V1 lately, so it's fresh on the mind. Well, it's good to make sure we're keeping the things that were good and addressing the things that were gaps. Yep. Yeah, as from an agenda, were you able to, do you have anything for us today? Um, I wanted to go over some of the feedback on the uh, tough document. I don't know if that was discussed in the last meeting. Um, I'm not sure which tough document there. Brandon's got a, an agenda for a tough implementation discussions. Does that overlap? Partially, I think. Um, uh, looking back at the doc that Marina had shared, I think uh, it's in the, uh, I noticed later that it's in the uh, uh, Git right now. Um, and I provided feedback on the original Google doc, but I was going to push some to the GitHub as well. Yeah, yeah I don't I think, think I we just... covered it in the last meeting. Sorry, Marina. Oh, sorry. I was just going to mention that I think I addressed some of the feedback in the translation. So um, hopefully, at least some of that shows up there. Uh, it does. I think there's a, um, a larger question I had around tying in and well, I can actually add this to the agenda rather than kind of hijacking the call right now. You're muted, Steve. Thank you. Uh, it was just a question to make sure we have the right things on there to try to time box stuff. Um, more so for myself uh, to give enough of what the progress we make it on the persistence and make sure there's room for the other topics. Because Brandon highlighted basically three, it can almost say it's one agenda item with three specific things. Um, so hopefully we can crank through those. Yeah, well, there's a lot there. I my main goal of this was just to throw them out there and say, hey, they exist. This is where to find them and drive some of that conversation back to Git in case other people are following along with this, um, but also to handle any interactive if we need to discuss it here. Yeah, for the three that I saw, just for others, I, I think I, I maybe I'm oversimplifying, but it boils down to the digest and tag combinations and how do we account for those? Would that be fair? That was definitely one of the big ones in there. Um, but I had three different discussions out there and one of them was like, you know, what is the root key cover? And I think we've been chatting about this back and forth of, is that like a registry concept or is it an organization concept? Is it a repo concept? You know, it, we've been looking at a lot of different ways. And so that might be more just generic discussion. Um, and the other one that wasn't about tags so much was about the time stamping, because I think that's something that from registry maintainers, a lot of us, I don't think we would be comfortable putting a timestamp service, combining that on a registry necessarily. So does it make sense to push that into the registry or does it make sense to have that as an external service? Makes sense. Okay. Um, all right, so why don't I do this? Let me try to give an update um, on where we're at in a couple of things. I was looking to see if Omar made it because he had some questions also on progress. Um, at the high level, I would say this, and I'll, and I'll give, give some context on what the first agenda item. As we make forward progress on the prototype, and I'll share my screen here. Uh, oh, there it is. Um, okay, so if we look, I thought I had it up here. Yeah, signing series. So we look at the flow we've been trying to make sure we can validate. Uh, actually, hold on, let me finish hitting the share button. There we go. Can everybody see my screen? Okay. Yes. Uh, just get, all right, 
I'm trying to get this visual. All right, anyway. Um, so we have, you know, the promotion of content through registries with multiple signatures. Uh, this implies a couple of things. The ability to, to define a signature, which we've got a prototype of that today. Um, and there's a bunch of good discussions around that. The ability to push, discover, and find, uh, and pull, push, discover, which is find, and pull a signature um, in a way that is not, let's hack on another very specific thing to a registry that like we kind of did with the sidecar notary v1, but can we do it in a generic way um, so that we can put other artifacts in there that we want to sign as well. You know, the signature obviously is one thing, but there's other things like S-bombs and WASMs and artifacts that we don't even know what people thinking about at this point. So there's some stuff there. And then there's the key management aspect of it um, as well. Those are the three critical parts, key management being an interesting conversation of how critical people are to how to do that. Um, and then there's another part of, great, I've got this signature in it, but what can I do with it? And that's the policy manager portions of it. Uh, and, I and I would suggest, and we'll talk more about this in Brandon's example, that maybe some of that is part of a policy management that somebody can uh, apply to things. So we'll, we'll play with that idea. But the main piece here is, as we've been discussing with these prototypes, you know, this, this model that we've been going after, and I talk model meaning the, the Gaudi model, that hey, before we go build this Sagrada Familia with very detailed design plans, let's create a couple of models to have something everybody of the various trades can look at, the subject matter expertise can look at and going, oh, I see where my thing fits in there. So I'm, we're finally, after the holidays and everything going on, getting some folks from OPA and Gatekeeper to help uh, do a prototype around this uh, so that we can see how would I apply something to something like Kubernetes. Because um, remember, this is not our notary scenarios is not dependent or singularly focused on Kubernetes. Kubernetes is just one of the many places we run containers. Uh, it just happens to be an easy way for us to prototype some of the policy managements. So those are the kind of big things, I, the big rocks that I think of that, and Omar was kind of bringing up some of this and like, how do we land this? If we can get the policy management uh, validated with the NV2 client that we've got to date, and I can get an update, which I'll show in a second here on the progress on how do I persist and discover artifacts in a registry, I think we're at a point where we can actually say, here's something that registry operators can implement um, so that we can start testing this with actual customers. It's great to do PowerPoints and pictures, but until we start playing with this in an in a interactive fashion, it's really hard to know where the rough edges are. And I think some of the questions, you know, again, just focused on some of Brandon's great questions of we can flesh out some of those because there's, there's, with many of these, there's no clear black and white answer. It's, is it good enough is always the, the challenge. So, with that, well, any questions before I jump to the first agenda item? Does that make sense for progress and kind of how we've been thinking about it? And as always, silence kind of means your mic doesn't work or we're okay. So, um, in the concept of that persistence, so one of the things that we've been um, struggling with, and this is one of the overlaps between notary and OCI uh, meetings that we have on Wednesday for the OCI distribution spec and OCI artifacts and so forth. You know, the, the concept here is, you know, as covered here, is we need to move content between registries. Registries are run by various companies, including competitive companies, right? We're all recognize the value of collaborating because we all have content that needs to move between these. So the, we need to be comfortable with the, with the way we would put these in registries. So there's a couple of elements in here. And I, I, for those that try to read up over the weekend, I did have a bunch of notes in there that was noise. So I, I did clean up things this morning. So this is a new push. Once I get it a little bit cleaner, I'll actually push it as a PR to the artifacts. Um, the OCI artifacts repo, so it's not just buried in mine. There's a couple of things that are design points um, that I've tried to put in here. And the main one is content will move between, within and between registries. And kind of the idea here is that you might with having a single registry promote the same content across different repos from dev staging and production, or you might um, 
put it with a cross registry. You might have a dev registry and a prod registry because of VNets or what other reasons you might have different registries. Um, but you also might promote your content to some public registry from a dev registry to another one. So products for web and networks and you can see they've got various artifacts there. And the idea is that there's something, the, the whole way we're trying to reference these things from signing to even copying content. One of the things I'm trying to tease out is what I started to cover here is basically, is it time to change how we reference container images and other things? If you think of any other package manager, the domain of where you're getting the NPM is not specified in the NPM reference you make. That's a separate configuration. There's defaults and you can alter those. So I'm trying to start teasing that concept in here. And so we have the bases, base in place for that. And one of the concepts are is deferred resolution. Um, I will reference something and it may, may not be in the registry that I'm using. I may pull a chart from one registry and I might pull the images from another registry. Um, so that's, those are valid scenarios while the layers or the blobs that make up a given artifact have to be with the artifact, right? Like a family might be dispersed across different locations, but the legs need to be attached to the body kind of thing, right? What makes up an artifact needs to be complete. So that's the, the general design points that I was trying to reference here. And I started messing with some examples of this where, and I, I'm playing with the idea, this is not a spec yet, it's just a, to show an example. Let's say there was an OCI registry CLI so that you can actually copy content from one registry to another or within or across. Um, and you might set the default registry to be Acme Rockets, for instance. You might set the root namespace to be dev because I don't want to have to specify namespaces uh, in things because in dev, I wanna reference the web at networks image and it comes from the dev namespace, but I wanna reference that same image without changing anything and actually comes from a different namespace or a different registry. So there's some ideas in here. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to riff on this right now as opposed to let me just, I'll make more progress on where this picture paints out. We can come back to it uh, if we want. Yeah, I would say be extremely careful about such things. Uh, okay. We in Red Hat, we've had su uh, such features and we mostly regret them. Uh, first of all, uh, once you have a default registry, people will ask to have a search list and that gives you ambiguity and gets you into impossible situations. Uh, second, uh, if you make the registry optional, know that namespaces within registries can look like host names. So you have syntactic, um, syntactic ambiguities in there. You're talking about like dots in the namespace? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and um, you have Oh, sorry. Where we settled is that we basically require everything to start with a host name. Uh, so we have a uh, worldwide namespace of, of uh, image names. And then we have a separate mapping configuration that allows you to map it to physical registries. So you can have an image that is called registry.redhead.io and have a configuration that says, oh, this is on my lo local mirror over here. OK, um, Mila, can we, can we talk more about that? Because I'd like to get more of that input. And, and then yeah. the other thing I'd say, which I think is, is somewhat related, is um, you want to make sure it's very clear what priority order the different um, repositories, repositories or registries are in. Um, because that way, if, for example, you know, a package is deleted from where you actually want to get it from, you don't want to download somebody else's version of that from somewhere else, because that might not be what you expect. Exactly. Uh, Those two parts. One is not good enough if you don't trust the DNS because uh, an attacker can just take the first, make the first registry inaccessible. Yeah, I mean, all of this are like that's the part. The next piece I want to drill into is details. The um, you know ordering obviously is configurable. The client can configure it. The belief here is one things will be in different locations depending on what environment you're in, but two. The idea is the signature is still valid. The, the point is, is that if to your point, Marina, if I was, in, you know, fell through to a secondary registry and, but if I, to my config, I'm not sure why it's a bad thing, but let's just say it's for some reason, it's a bad thing. If that secondary registry got hacked, um, then the signature in theory would not be valid. And if the signature is not valid, then my validation would catch that. So that would be a, one of the validation scenarios. Well, I think the, Where's my, am I 
Is my microphone working? I uh, it's it quiet. Your okay. I think I think the problem is more so it makes it impossible to unpublish things. How is that so? Because well, if you have multiple um, registries, uh, disparate people can own the namespaces on different registries and copy things between them and preserve the signatures, but the very top of the tree can unpublish something and someone that's copying that can not honor that unpublishing it. I think that's the problem with sort of a search path, even if the signatures are valid. Well, I think it depends how you determine if the signatures are valid. If you're, um, if you're getting the, um, the keys to the signatures and their paths somehow originally from that source, then I don't think they would still remain valid if they were revoked. I mean, we should yeah, recognize exactly. that there are multiple, multiple, multiple public registries now. That's a foregone conclusion. So it's just a matter of, and sometimes, you know, you want the content to be copied into a place that you control because you, you trust it. And if somebody does unpublish it, there's a couple of node examples of node yarn or left pad where I actually want to make sure I don't get the upstream stuff. Um, but let me go for this is this is the challenge with trying to talk with too many concepts in one. So what I there's a great conversation there. It actually wasn't the main point. So I'll come. I want to come back to that one. The main thing I wanted to show was this directionality uh, that we've been support uh, adding to registries to be able to support adding artifacts like a signature to an existing artifact in a registry as well as um, referencing additional artifacts in it. So what I'm getting, let me walk through a couple examples and see if this makes sense. If you look at an OCI image, the manifest that you submit has direct pointers to the layers, right? So I can look at a manifest and see it points to layers and that's the thing that makes this up. And of course it points to the, you know, the blob as well, but it's, it's a directional, it's a downward directional Merkle tree kind of you know, model where I can see from the top down everything that's there. From a notary signature, when I submit the signature of itself, of course, there's a manifest that says I am a signature and there's the blob that makes up that signature. And that's very much the same structure as an image. The problem is that I wanna be able to take the WordPress image that I have here with its tag and digest, and I wanna add a signature to it and not have to change the digest or tag of the WordPress image, right? That's it's a fundamental design point of uh, the NV2, uh, notary V2 work that we're doing. So what we've been doing is saying, that's fine. You can push a signature to a registry and it references the WordPress image. There is a, if you notice the directionality of the, the pointers is changing. And this was an interesting thing that we had to think about from registries because registries have always been a top down looking indexing thing. And now we're saying, I want to ask the registry, hey, what are the signatures for this WordPress image? And the registry can go back and look at, hey, what other things were pushed in that reference the chart, sorry, the, uh, the WordPress image. So there's a, a bi-directionality of those references that we've, that we've added. And you know, that meets the requirement of the digest and tag don't change for WordPress. And I can add any collection of signatures over time. So I can go to do Wabba Networks adds a signature, Docker Hub says I test to this content, and Acme says after they've imported it into their environment, they test it and it meets their requirements. So now when they do their deployment, they can put a rule, a policy that says they would only allow stuff that's signed by Acme Rockets. And over here somewhere in the environment is where they say, well, I'll only pull in content that's signed by Docker Hub or, or Wabbit Networks. So that's that's kind of like the model we've been going through, you know, as a design point. But it's been a little challenging to make sure we can do this in a scalable way. And when we start looking at other artifact types, it becomes a little interesting in how we can do this. So I've been playing a little bit with some of the ones that I know of. I, I, there's some other ones that I want to look more at um, for like singular, well, singularity I sort of know, but they're fairly simplistic and. Um, and the kind of references they make. Um, so I want to look at some others. So here's the ones that I do know of. So imagine that one of the challenges we have today with WordPress, sorry, with Helm charts is a chart 
has references to images, but they're all buried inside the Helm chart. From a registry perspective, it has no knowledge of that unless it was to parse the Helm chart itself. And we're trying to come up with a pattern that doesn't need to know the, the intricacies of every artifact type. And the analogy I make is, you know, as we save files to our disk, you know, there's file system APIs. It knows, you know, how to link in, you know, multiple file segments, especially as they get fragmented across the disk. Uh, there's no Word, Office Word API for saving files, right? There's a file system API. There's no, you know, Go language file APIs, per, you know, for managing files on disk. There's, you know, files happens to have a .go extension or whatever, and the file system handles that. So I can copy something from one folder in a, in, on my local storage to another one or USB stick or whatever, and it knows how to find all those elements and copies them with them. We want to be able to have that same generic APIs and registries. So the scenarios that we want to be able to support is, you know, the downward links, which registries are to support, right? The layers, I've just called them blobs now. Um, the reverse lookup, I can enhance an artifact in a registry with additional information. And the, the third is I want to be able to take something and put it in a registry that says, hey, I'm referencing this other thing. It may or may not be in the registry right now. And that's okay. Like if you look at PyPy, you know, the ways those package references, like it can be evaluated later. If the WordPress chart can be submitted with a manifest, a new OCI artifact manifest that says, hey, I'm referencing this thing by its digest and by a tag. Now I could say, I could pull it out of the registry as just the Helm chart. And now on the client, I could say, hey, do I have everything I need? Well, I already pulled the MySQL and the WordPress image from Docker Hub and I pulled the Helm chart from Helm Hub, whatever. Now I can look locally and say, yep, I've got everything valid to put into, you know, to do my deployment. I could also say I want to copy it from into the registry as well. So there's a couple of interesting scenarios. And I talk about the uh, copy and delete below. But I can take this even one step further. A CNAV, which is this idea that I can, you know, stand up and run a set of installations of other things, instead of everything being embedded in this, you know, uh, invocation image that's referred to, I could have a CNAV that references a Helm CLI, and it also externally references a chart, which is just what I've done up here, and it has references to the images. So I start to get an interesting graph of content that defines the things I'm absolutely dependent on, the layers or blobs that make up the artifact, the things that I'm enhancing, a notary signature enhances any other artifact type, and the third being loose references to other collections that may or may not be in the same registry. And um, so that's kind of the you know, piece that I've got here, uh, or the supported scenarios, discovery, copying, deletion, um, you know, the visualization, which you can kind of see here. And I'll, I'll walk through this visualizations and I'll pause for some for feedback. So one of the reasons that we're doing this, these three collections to reference that is if I push just loose artifacts, the way we've got a, an artifacts v1 in the registry today, and I, I've been a little bit more you know, abusive of what we've done. Like we don't show layers separately when we do uh, a registry listing, right? We know that these things are part of this image. So if that's the case, then why would a signature show up separately or an SBOM or a CNAB or Helm? The idea is we wanna be able to have that same kind of information to be able to make those enhancements better. So today, what I can, well, not today, sorry. Uh, what we'd like to do is say, yeah, this is the image. It's got a signature. It may even have an SBOM. And over time, we're hoping we can have a generic metadata API over that artifact as well. From a discovery perspective, I really, this is the thing I want to see. I want to see I've got an image, a CNAB, a Helm, and I've started playing with little expandos here. Because if I really want to dig in, then I could say, well, what is in this CNAB? So I can click the little expando and say, oh, the CNAB actually references the Helm CLI and the Helm chart. And oh, I can expand the Helm chart to see it references you know, these container images. So you start to see we've got you know, the, the, the core pieces to be able to represent these things. And if you squint at this, you'll notice 
the only thing that knows that this is a helm and image and other signatures, the only reason I need that is for the, for the icons. We've got a separate way to, to map uh, media types to icons. All of the other representations here, if you took the icons away, that could be done with this new manifest that we're proposing here. Um, and then the copy semantics start to cover that as well. So I, I'll probably stop there for discussion. So this is uh, Marco speaking. Uh, Steve, I have one question uh, regarding discovery and storage. And uh, so, so let's say you have this uh, generic uh, community signature, which uh, uh, was used to sign the artifact first. Uh, then I copy it into my own registry and I add my own signature there. Um, is there any need to synchronize these signatures between the registries? And um, you know, what about storage? So I can imagine if you are depending on a lot of community registries um, out there in the public and you're copying a lot of images. Um, yeah, as you can add more and more signatures, the, there is more and more need to, to synchronize these as well. So uh, did you have any thoughts on, on, on how, how this will be resolved? Let me make sure I understand the question. So um, I'll come over to our example here. So Web Networks is a software vendor. They sign their content. For each build, they're going to sign that particular build, right? Because we sign digests and tags. So it's there is one signature per artifact that they published. They then publish it to Docker Hub, and then Docker Hub would sign again that same digest and tag excuse me, that they would put. So at this point, there's two and it is located on Docker Hub because somebody that pulls from Docker Hub might have a network rule that says I trust Docker Hub, but I don't know who these people are. So the content has to be here. Likewise, when I go into Acme Rockets, Acme Rockets is adding a third signature to that same uh, net monitor software image. Um, so now there's three signatures. The signatures are, are pretty small. They're probably as big as the manifest itself is probably bigger than the actual content of the signature, but there is three. Over time, when Wabbit Networks is making new builds, they're creating new signatures, but for the, it's for that new piece of software. There, there is probably reasonably numbered amounts of signatures for any given artifact, um, and it's probably more related to the workflow. Mm -hmm. So there's the two points is we definitely want to have the ability to have the content move with it because Acme Rockets operates in a private network here. They don't want any access to anything outside of their environment. So the content has to be there. They don't have a dependency on it from, is the internet available and a security wise, they don't want to go out. Yeah, from so, so for from my uh, question, um, so we earlier there was also the question, uh, what if the, the upstream uh, artifact is deleted? Uh, yeah, in those cases, uh, we personally also want to have that in a private registry. So at least our builds do not fail because the thing disappeared. But what about signatures? Let's say if um, uh, Webit Networks revokes the signature because they figured out uh, that was done by a, a person uh, which, which shouldn't have put the signature. Um, what about synchronizing those kind of changes? Uh, should that also mean uh, the Docker Hub signatures should invalidate? Or is that just something where we need to notify Docker Hub that a signature was revoked and then still have them decide if they want to revoke their own signature? Yeah, great point. So the con to your point, the content may disappear, which is not necessarily a good thing. And I want to be protected from that. But I also want to be protected if it was discovered that the solar winds package that was put up there, just to play with the latest, you know, uh, world changing discussion point, um, that I can revoke that. Um, so that falls into our key verification scenarios and our key management that I am casting over to Niaz, uh, who's been, you know, cheerleading that with uh, with Ian is, you know, trying to support him as well. So. Yes, we definitely want to be able to do that. Um, there's two sides of it. One in an air gapped, which is also a network isolated environment. I want to make sure that I'm not dependent on external keys, but I also absolutely want to make sure I can bring key verifications into my environment to say that key is no longer valid and just trust anything associated with that. So 
To kind Isn't of it the case it that you more. can also revoke a signature? So uh, revoke the signature is also possible. Uh, so that means the, the existing key is still there, but I'm revoking the signature. Yeah, I think that's an interesting one. I, I think we have to think further and I, I haven't put a ton of thought about it. I certainly can understand why I might want to revoke a signature. Um, I think we should spend more time thinking about that because I could see that also being abused very quickly. And I'm not sure if that's the kind of noise we, when I say noise, the, the, the amount of traffic that would have to go around to try to synchronize all that. I, I think that's, I don't know, it'll be really good to think about what invalidates the signature because is it just a vulnerability? Because there's always going to be vulnerabilities. It's just a matter of when yeah. you discuss so it could I also be that you just release a new release with a new signature uh, and don't revoke the old one. So but have is that a more a... immutable. I think in the terms of like, you know, if you're re-signing artifacts, it boils down to a question of where do you want the controls to be? So if, for example, you're taking a dependency on Wabbit networks, then you could essentially just go look at their signature directly. You don't necessarily need to look at the Docker or the Acme signatures. Um, in that scenario, you're obviously uh, dependent on like Wabbit networks. If they if they make a call that they're revoking a signature, then um, you're essentially saying that you know I'm going to go into the revocation path. Uh, if as Acme Rockets, let's say you decide that, hey, um, you know, I, I want to do my own verification and rely on that instead, um, you could, uh, you know, with the second signature, you could have um, your, your validation look at two things. One, uh, look to verify an Acme Rocket signature and also look to verify a Wabbit network signature. Uh, in which case, if either one is revoked, uh, you could fail. Or the third scenario where you look at just the Acme Rocket signature, in which case whoever is responsible for signing uh, as Acme Rockets is also responsible for checking uh, for revocation. So it really depends on where you're delegating uh, your, um, your trust for revocation and for signing to. Also, if you think uh, revocation is an essential part of your workflow, consider whether you want signatures or just an online service. Like if you want, was this approved or is this free of known vulnerabilities? That's a boolean that should be delivered over TLS. That's not a signature. There's the middle ground of those moving tags like colon latest or colon one, which means the latest version of one X. And in that case, some revocation might make sense. But uh, it's difficult to square this with disconnected scenarios. I think what very yeah, kind I put a note in there is that the signatures just have a short expiration date, and for disconnected, you would add an uh, extra tolerance for recently expired signatures. Yeah, I put a good top. I put a note in there for us to have a good discussion because I. There's definitely some interesting points that we should dig into there. I, and I think from the from a point of what I was trying to just cover here is as long as we can persist these things, let me get the right document here. By persisting these things in this model, then we have what I'm trying to do is we have the model in the registry to do these kind of behavioral things. And I, in fact, I noticed some comments in the chat session around localhost and other things. Like those are all great things that we need to be concerned with. Those are things that you can add in theory, part of the policy management that says, well, don't allow localhost. It must come from a particular domain. It must come from a particular registry. Um, from this portion of the content so we can get to the next phase of testing the end to end, I'm trying to figure out can we represent these things as in this schema? And I'll just I'll pop to the last. There's some examples in here of the schemas. So here's like a standard image with layers. What you'll see here is now I've replaced layers with blobs because there's a lot of debate around that. And because we're introducing a new schema of an OCI artifact manifest, which here the signature has a dependency on the MySQL image. This is how that reverse pointer is saying, I as a signature, signature stored here, is pointing to the MySQL image, there's the tag, and then here is the digest. 
but you'll notice I don't care whether the MySQL image is in the dev branch, dev repo, the a prod repo, or whatever, or even which registry that's in. Those are lazy deferred resolutions. But the signature signs the digest of this. So wherever it comes from, that you know should be able to be valid. And you can I'm, I'm scrolling through this quickly because I do want to get onto the other ones and I want to get this set up for PR for people to, to read this and provide just tear it apart with feedback. Um, and then there's just, again, some more examples here. So the Helm chart is stored, it's blobs, and, and Josh, I'm just, I'm, ex I'm exploding here just for the point of clarity, not trying to say this is how Helm actually works. Uh, but the Helm chart, this part definitely doesn't work because we don't have any way to do it today. Here is where the Helm chart could declare, it depends on these two images. And now if I want to copy a Helm chart from one registry to another, I have the ability to actually pull this content from one registry to another. So that's part of the nicety that we have there. And then lastly, the CNAM reference for those. Um, so I do have two thoughts on this. Um, the first is you kind of started showing some recursive stuff in there. And do you envision the registry server itself doing that recursive search? Or do you see that being a client side thing? It's a little bit of both. I've been playing with the both sides of it. That's why I kind of was messing with an OCI Reg API to kind of visualize what that experience would be. And that's why you're also seeing some of this config stuff uh, come in at the top here for how it resolves. Uh, here we go, how it resolve things like, well, where should I look for the WordPress chart? Well, look in the charts path. Um, so I wanna be careful not to have like the 24,000 depth resolution thing. There'd be, you know, we have to think about where is, uh, Sajay had a term for it, deterministic resolution, I don't know, something about closure. You know, how do you get the closure to all of those? Um, so definitely need some more thoughts and people that have been through these pain points in the past. Like, is it an arbitrary, you know, 256, 1024, four? Is it a configurable depth of resolution? Uh, don't know yet. Yeah, my, my personal leanings on this one, not being a person that's running the massive registry server would be to have that client side just because of those issues. I'm just imagining someone linking is something that goes recursive a couple layers down and then basically denial of service against your registry when they say query page 999, now query page 1000, assuming we're paginating this response just because it has so many details, you're gonna have to regenerate that result every single time. It's, it's gonna be painful. So that, that was the first thought. Um, yeah, and th that is one of the benefits by having registry operators. Part of this is yeah. my engineering team will let me never let this be shipped if we don't have a way to avoid a denial of service attack. So uh, well, the balance of usability and practicality. Yeah. The other thought when we come specifically to talking about signatures is that it would be nice if that query response actually included the content and not just the pointer to it. And I'm thinking, you know, you get back 10 signatures, these are all going to be tiny. It would be nice if we just actually got the 10 signatures in there and maybe you have the and reference. Not the that says, trips, but yeah, here's yeah. the thing you can go request. Nope, that's not the one I want. Nope, that, let me ask that. Nope, that's not the one I want. Yeah, there's, um, there's a healthy balance that we've been working through. In fact, the initial prototype, you could argue, was overly optimized. What I'm trying to, and that's why I'm experimenting with some other artifact types is I want to make sure that we didn't recreate Notary V1 in the sense that, great, we solved one problem, but it actually didn't really solve enough of the problem. So I'm trying to find that balance of how many API calls you have to make without it knowing about a specific artifact type. So yeah, that's, that's part of the next piece of this once I get this thing figured out. That's great, that's a great point. Was there a third one? Nope, just those two. <laughs> okay. So we're a little bit over what I would hope to cover in this time frame. I would definitely want to leave room for the other agenda items. Um, I will get this PR'd hopefully this week to the artifacts repo, but I'm, it'll be PR. I'll probably do it in our uh, notary. Did I put one here? Well, we, we've been staging everything here. Yeah, there is one here. So I'll probably PR it here. So we have all of the things we need around notary staged in one place. And when we've got all the iteration between them should be figured out, then I'll send the PRs upstream to where they you know, originate. Because you know, if you notice, we have 
distribution for changes that we're looking at, artifacts, auras, the distribution spec, MV2, so on and so forth. So um, just as a reminder, we're, we're staging everything here, making sure we're happy across everything. And then once we as a group are happy with how all these things interact, then we'll send the PRs back to their uh, originating repos. So with that, um, I want to hand off to Brendan. Brendan, sorry. Okay. Sorry. I'm yeah. an eight. And um, this, I, I'm imagining we might end up kind of going off in discussions on this. Is this 50 Spire discussion a quick one that we want to get in before we get derailed? Uh, I'll, I'll just say going gonna once, going twice. Um. I mean, I'm not like an expert in it or anything. I don't know if anyone else wants to take this one, <laughs> but I've, I've done some, you know, some reading on it. So uh, I put the agenda item there. Um, basically my thought was, what if we could utilize it to uh, not have to do the key management? So my, my thought was initially, what if we have this uh, Spire server to, um, uh, define our root uh, uh, certificate. Um, the Spiffy protocol, from what I understood so far, is uh, rotating keys uh, basically uh, automatically every now and then. And um, if you would register a workload, let's say a sign or service uh, within uh, Spire, then um, yeah, you can use the attestation uh, yeah, to, to verify that this this sign of service is uh, uh, trusted by the by the network, and maybe that's already good enough to uh, to use that as a signing uh, uh, solution. Uh, the thing I'm doubting though is uh, yeah how that works with with signatures and and keys that are continuously rotating and uh, things like that. So. It was a wild thought, which I got when I uh, saw this uh, Spiffy Spire presentation um, last week, where I was thinking, what if we could use this, not have to do key management at all? Yeah, I think that they really um, have thought a lot about that like initial source of trust problem and how to kind of solve trust on first use. And I feel like um, it might be good for us to take advantage of that as like how to initially distribute it. Um, but like you mentioned, I think for the more day-to-day -day key management keys that are used and changed more often, it might be nice to have something else, which is why I feel like it, it's best suited for that kind of, you know, distrib distribution of root keys and kind of initial root of trust that you, that you can then build the rest of your system off of. But I think that's a really great way to do that. So, so I, I lost I, the connection for, for a bit, so I didn't catch it completely, but um, I'll just probably uh, watch back the, the recording of this. Uh... Yeah, is this something we might want to move to get a GitHub discussion going on, pros and cons? I was going to say, if we can move it to the, uh, the Nias has the, the key management working group, if we can put it in that, you know, not that we shouldn't use a GitHub discussions by any means, but there's a group, people kind of wrestling that furball would be good to think about. Yeah, so um, I don't think we should take too much time over here, but uh, just want to, to drop the the ball here and see uh, what are the thoughts. And yeah, maybe my idea is uh, just crazy. Uh, maybe it's also something which uh, which is feasible. I just don't know myself. Yeah, I think a bunch of us are, are guessing it looks interesting. That's why I want to, if we could put it in the key management group, then we yeah. have the key management experts could say, yeah, this thing is just doesn't have anything to do with this. Or yeah, this actually would be great if we did X, Y, and Z. So. Yeah, so this Wednesday, I have a meeting with uh, Cole Kennedy. He had been doing some spiffy spire integration within Toto. So uh, hopefully I can get some more insights uh, from him. And uh, then I keep you guys posted. Full disclosure, he's my coworker. Um, okay, so we want to jump in to a couple of scenarios and stuff going on here. I'll go ahead and share mine. Yeah, that'd be great. Can I ask one thing though? Um, sure. We're really bad about keeping notes. Can I ask folks that instead of put things in the chat session, 
to please put it in the note the note section of uh, the HackMD. For those that joined later, I'll repaste it in the chat session. Except. Who Roth contributions may benefit depends on your personal tax situation now and in the future. <laughs> if you make Roth contributions, well, you are just... giving up a tax break today or a tax break in the future. Yeah. Generally, if you can add there, Steve. <laughs> so um, I put the first one I want to chat about real quick here was adding to the notary requirements. I threw a pull request out there. And I think we might have gotten a little derailed on this one. The, the original focus of scenario 10 was to kind of just acknowledge that clients might reference things different ways. And so clients may actually query and say, I wanna pull this image with a shot or I might wanna pull it with a tag or something like that. And I think we all know that happens. I'm just defining it here. And the reason was kind of thinking through a lot of the tough requirements. I wanted to make sure that tough didn't go down one path of saying everything is based off of tags when there are users out there that are basing their decisions off of just shots. And so I wanna make sure we covered all the different use cases, um, also covering that sometimes we might be pulling multi-platform images, different kinds of scenarios like that, and that maybe one day we want to consider that um, signing a notary could also handle other stuff like Helm charts or other things like that. So this isn't getting into the discussion yet of do we want to actually sign the tag? It's just saying that users may want to do a query based off of an image they're running that is to find what the tag and then the client might need to do some dereferencing or something based on that. Any discussion on number 10? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I would say throw it over in the GitHub side if it looks good or bad to anybody there. The other part of this one, I, I was starting with just 11 and then I realized I need to break off and do 10 before then. So I had to renumber things. But I wanted to get into the delayed verification because I think this gets into different scenarios that some of us might face where we have a build, a CI pipeline, something like that, that signs an artifact and then we go along and do more builds and more signing of other artifacts. And then we finally get to the process of actually deploying that first artifact we signed way back. And so I just wanted to specify that there might be some space in there and that gets back to, if we're thinking through some of the tough requirements where we build a whole list of targets and we refresh the target for what version two might be or something like that, that we don't want to automatically unsign something that was previously signed and then therefore no longer trust it because that could get us, that could bite us, especially if you've already deployed this out in production and now you have a node failure and the workload fails over to another node. You don't want to implicitly unsign something that you previously trusted. I think that makes more sense to have it as something that's more explicit where someone says, I specifically don't want to trust this image anymore because something went wrong with it. So I just wanted to throw that one out there as something I think makes sense for us. And I'm sure the tough people are looking at going, oh no, that gives us headaches, but I just want to at least see if that's something that we agree as from a group standpoint or not. So Brandon, are you, are you basically touching a thing that just because I got a newer version of something doesn't mean the old one is bad? Correct. And I think it depends on what we're signing. If we're signing tags, this becomes much more visible. If you're signing the SHA digest like you're doing, Steve, I think it's something that just, it comes out of the box. It's just the way it is. Yeah, I think it also comes into the concept of stable and unique tags. Like if you're deploying something should you be generating a unique tag every time you do a deployment as opposed to base images or to some extent software that I do deploy, um, that I do reference, you know, a stable tag. So if I'm referencing the node nine image in my from statement, I want to be able to get updates to node nine without having to say node 9.1.6.3.4. Whatever. Yeah. Right? To, um, to throw a scenario out there. Um, if you, said that, okay, we're going to do our build and our build is version nine. And I want to deploy that and trust it, but I want to actually be very specific on it. You might dereference it as part of your build script. You may say, okay, I am going to trust this shot with this massive digest. So I know that it's unique and I go through all my steps and I know that it's not changing anywhere. But if your signing system says, okay, let me go out and sign all these images now and do a timestamp against it and keep the snapshots and everything, think through the tough model and I only look at all the stuff that's currently tagged, then we may lose that we had something that was previously signed because it's no longer referenced by tag. 
Yeah, I think that this is, I think this is mostly a matter of making sure that the, um, yeah, the snapshot includes old metadata as well. And it's mostly about making sure that, you know, the metadata that's there is, is current so that if you, if you do decide for some reason to remove something, it's no longer there, but we should yeah, definitely make sure that anything that's not removed sticks around until otherwise. Yeah. yeah. And that gets to the implication is just saying that implicitly we shouldn't implicitly unsign something. I'm thinking it should be something that's more explicit where you actually say, I specifically don't want to trust this digest anymore. Right. I think it kind of comes into maybe even the, the signature replication scenarios mm -hmm. kind of thing. And maybe you have a policy. Yeah, and again, it might come into the policy management that, you know, the older version of MySQL is still perfectly valid. Um, but yeah, it has vulnerabilities. Most software does. Do those vulnerabilities matter to me? And if I see a MySQL 8, should that point to MySQL 8.1, you know, as a policy? I, I mean, I, those are interesting problems. So hopefully this was just throwing these easy ones out. I think a lot of the discussion that the group will want to have is more around some of the things I didn't throw specifically into this, but left it as an issue. So I would say thumbs up, thumbs down this issue if you think it deserves or doesn't deserve to be approved. And I don't know what your policy is on uh, approving some of these PRs, Steve, but I just wanted to get that out there. You know, it, it's I'm not the gatekeeper per se. I think everybody should you know give a thumbs up, thumbs down vote and. The, I'm not even sure where I have looked at the maintainers, but we'll, you know, there's a, we're, we're not just arbitrary committing things. We want people to be comfortable with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one that I think is probably going to get the most discussion is whether we should be signing tags in addition to the digest. So this isn't saying that we don't want to sign the digest. I think we've got a very clear understanding from the group that there are people that are deploying things by digest and we want to verify images that are um, referenced by digest. But the other question is, do we also want to sign tags and what does that look like? And the example I threw out here was just saying, you know, maybe you've already deployed something that is version 1.5 and should that be something you can check and make sure, hey, was this really 1.5 that I'm pulling or did the registry have some man in the middle that jumped in there and just returned a 0.9 dash debug image that we don't want to trust, we don't want to run that in production but something man in the middle of that gave us that and we checked the digest to see if it was signed. And the digest says, yeah, it was signed by that person. So you can trust it. Is that a case that we want to solve with this? And then the question of what do we want to sign with that tag comes into what if you have multiple repositories, that same person is signing all kinds of stuff that digest will come back and say it's verified by that same Acme Rockets in this case. If you only sign the 1.5, you could have a different 1.5 for a different image that gets thrown in there. Um, maybe they've got a different debug repo with other more exposed images. So threw that out there, just kind of think through the logic of that of do we want that and does it make sense? And I've seen a few people that said, no, we probably don't want to need do this. And so, you know, if there are people that kind of agree with me that that makes sense as a concern, I would say jump on this issue because I'm seeing a lot of people saying, no, nah, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I think I saw, uh, um, Treeway kind of jump in here. Like we, we definitely are currently, the current prototype, when I say definitely, current prototype has the digest and the tag, uh, the repo tag signature included. I think it actually has the whole registry, which we're, we're, we're wrestling with that. And that's part of what I'm teasing in this latest spec. The thing that I was trying to play with is, again, a policy decision. Like you may want to uh, get new versions of the tag. Um, and as long as they're signed by Wabbit Networks in this case, that would be valid. I think your man in the middle attack comes interesting is since the digest is always the thing, the, the digest is always part of the signature. So I always know very specifically the, the absolute thing that I'm trying to pull is it signed by the original entity. Um, so your man in the middle attack is, unless they've got the actual signing key, which of course is always you know, a, a concern, which is that the key then gets revoked because we don't know what they're doing with it. Um, then if I were to update the MySQL 8 image with, you know, the bad version of it, because I hacked it, that even though the tag was redirected to something else, because the digest is what gets signed, that MySQL, new, the bad version of MySQL 8 image will not be signed by MySQL. Um, so it would be yeah. considered invalid. Yeah, and I think looking at this, I think we're always going to know that this was signed, hopefully by someone we trust. 
but it's just it might not be the same image that we thought we were getting. And so and I think that the, so, the verification of this um, tag, um, what's it called? The resolution, sorry, that's what I was looking for. The, tag, the verification of that tag resolution is one of the problems that Node v1 actually solves. And I think I would hesitate to, um, to basically remove features in v2 by making it so that we don't verify that resolution um, here. And I think it, it might require yeah, a, few, a couple extra signatures, especially if um, you know, different, the tag is reused a lot. But I think hopefully people aren't reusing tags so frequently that it would be a, a burden to re-sign those and push them as they change as at the same time they're signing the, the digests. Yeah, my vision was that you would probably have whatever the current tag is signed. And then maybe if there was an old version of 1.5, you no longer um, is the 1.5 tags. I don't care as much if that's no longer sitting out there because you just pull the newer version of the image. Um, so from that perspective, this models very closely to what we have with Notary V1. I think that the... Um allergy some of us have to this idea is that signing the tags ends up being really close to signing the names. And that's one of the things that's been a, a big usability challenge with Notary V1. So what I'm interested in is, are there other ways that we can achieve the same goal, basically of rollback protection, without having to resort to signing the tags? And I think that we could look at things that are different from that might have different trade-offs instead. Well, it's not rollback protection. It's if I want version 1.5, I need to get 1.5, not 1.4 and not 1.6. Yeah. And I think the challenge is if you reference it as one, because, you know, the way some of these stable tags are done, is one currently pointing at 1.4 or 1.5 or 1.6? So what does one represent is uh, often the, the question there. Because that in theory, one, one rolls forward and it's the stable tag for whether it's 1.4 or 1.5 or 1.6. One would always be the most the stable release of, of that versioning scheme. Um, so the, the, when I think about it, like when I'm doing deployments, the, one of the things we see is people want to reference tags because they're human readable. You know, they, they give you the break glass scenario so you can redeploy something. Uh, but some people really, really don't trust anything and they just want to deploy by digests and too bad, read this really long key and when it gets to be 512, read that longer one. Um, both of those are actually supported with the way we've been going about this, right? You can, because we sign both at deployment time, you can decide whether I want to reference it by tag or digest because we, the challenge is we definitely don't want to sign just tags. So then I think we get the flexibility from the naming that um, Sam's talking about uh, and we're referencing here. I think part of the naming, and again, part of what's what I'm trying to pull out of this other um, our artifact spec scenario is the name, just the last element and the registry and path have not, are, isn't anything to do with the signature. I'm signing this thing. If I want to promote it from a dev to a prod repo, it's still the same entity, still the same sign, still the same name. If I want to put it across different registries, whether it be Web and Network, Docker, or Acme, or even across my own environment, that shouldn't matter. The thing we've been wrestling with is, do we consider the name, even the repo name and tag to be like the signed thing? And I'm still struggling on that one. So at this point, I, I'm thinking of proposing it. That's just a client CLI experience that you can decide um, when you go to validate the thing, if the repo tag is different than what's in the signature because the signature has both then you can say i don't trust this thing because it's not what originally was um, i think that there also could be some advantage to actually having separate signatures for the digests in the tags um, where you have the digest that sign that says okay this this is the digest that you know we that you know we made this digest here it is and then the tags are okay so this is the this is this release and we're attaching it to that and having those kind of be separate processes because the tags might change and then you could update those signatures, whereas the digests obviously will never change. And so those signatures won't ever need to have anything different in them. Yeah, if, 
I definitely see it as being two different signatures, one for the digest and one for the tag. And the other thought coming in here is, does it make sense when you start to mirror these? You know, a lot of our concern is as we start mirroring these images across different places, does it make sense to make a new tag signature on that mirror that would be signed by whoever's running that registry, whoever's making that mirror? And then you just decide if you want to trust that signature. Well, you can do that or you can just tell the client to accept images with a different name that can be client side policy. Yep. In most cases, the administrator of the mirror and administrator of the clients accessing that mirror are going to be very close. Yeah, I think mirrors, there's an interesting conversation. Are we talking mirrors generically or are we talking literally a mirror implementation? Because if it's more of a, if it's a mirror, then I don't know how you add content to a mirror as opposed to, um, unless it's Snapchat where you can add things to pictures already, but as opposed to the gated import stuff that we've been talking about is I selectively choose content and bring it into an environment and then I can do whatever I want to it because it's really, is, it's a copy. Um, yeah. Those definitely make sense for the additional signature scenarios and that's part of our, you know, web and network to Acme Rocket scenarios. So real quick, being sensitive on time, um, just wanted to point out there are a few others out here that I threw out. Um, another one of the issues was, do we want to limit the trust of a sign key? And this kind of gets at, if you have someone like Microsoft signing all the Microsoft images, should you trust it if they suddenly started signing the Google images? Not to pick on you, Steve, but just kind of no. throwing out there, you know, who do we want to have trusting each image? Do we want to start to have a client side validation that I trust this key for this namespace. But what does that namespace mean in that case? If, if content moves between, because like when we, when we publish stuff on MCR, we fully expect customers to copy that content into their registry. So the idea that when they run it, the MCR domain would not be anything to do with the image they pull because it would come from their GCR registry, for your example. I think similar tags, that would be a client side configuration if they could say, this is going to be trusted on whatever mirror that I copy it to or wherever I move it to. That's something I think we covered as a uh, requirement in the trust or configuration on the client devices, where you'd be able to scope uh, what the key is being used to trust, whether it's a repository, registry, or tag, uh, and it could go either way. Yeah. So that one, there were the three other tough discussions as well um, that I threw out there, but I think we've kind of hit our time limits. So I don't want to take up time here, but just people to be aware that they exist. Feel free to go out there and chat on those. Yeah, I just noticed we actually are over. So um, when we wrap up and first I'll just say, thanks for everybody joining for the new year. We finally got this thing kicked off in the new year. We obviously have a lot of progress going on, a lot of great conversations and um, Hope we'll kick off next week and uh, with the next round. But by, I love the the new discussion stuff that we have in GitHub. So let's definitely utilize those so we don't we don't have to squeeze everything into a one hour conversation. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next Thank week. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye.